Okay, so let's get started. This is a 2021 Audi Q3. Has all wheel drive, well, Quattro, I guess. Um, this is a rental, and I believe this is the base model because there's an actual key instead of turn uh, push to start. Um, and some missing features I would have expected. So let's start it up. You gotta push, put your foot on the brake. Or else it won't start all the way. So a couple things to start. Um, fully digital dash, which is nice. Let me turn that off. Um, yeah, fully digital dash. Tachometer on the left, speedometer on the right. Pretty, uh, pretty standard. You got three sections to go through. You have the main computers. You have the music. Um, controls and then you have a phone control on the right, which I'm not going to show um, Day and time obviously your your fuel efficiency short-term memory which resets every time um, You drive long-term memory, which is like, you know it, it, it keeps the information until you manually reset it and then Energy consumer I'm not quite sure what this is but um, it's there for you. Other than that, you have your normal um, odometer and your trip odometer and time and then temperature. Going on to the infotainment, they have a nice clear touchscreen. The colors are good. It's pretty responsive. I found though that sometimes if my fingers are too dry, um, it'll, it won't register the touch. Um, go here for car settings um, there's different drive modes you can select you can select off-road comfort auto dynamic I'm on individual right now an individual will let you set um, the drive style between balanced and sport and the steering um, between comfortable balanced and sport I have everything set on sport because otherwise this car feels a little anemic physical HVAC controls which I love um, I hate touch controls on climate control. And then you have a few more buttons down here. Drive select, you can, instead of going through the infotainment, you can just manually select it here. Traction control, engine auto start, which I, uh, I'll i keep on for now, but I'm personally not a fan of that feature on cars. And you have a volume control knob here, which is positioned more towards the passenger side which makes sense in a way because the driver has the steering wheel controls and then a physical lever for your gear shift. All right, let's get going. So we're just gonna do a quick loop around and then this loop will also include highways, local roads. Um, so hopefully you get a good feel for what the car is like to drive if you're in the market for one of these. I don't believe the Q3 is changing for the 2022 model year, so um, even though this is a 2021, this uh, up, everything will apply towards the 2022s. Driving this car, I have found that it likes to stay within the two to three hundred or two to three thousand RPM mark, um, especially when you're accelerating, even in sport mode. 
you really have to push the pedal down to, to, to get it to rev all the way up and it, do, it doesn't want to and that kind of plays into the luxury aspect of it I think it's more of a smooth slower acceleration as you can hear it's pretty quiet on the highway well pavement type depending assist on this model um, and what you have to do is you have to press this button on the side of the um, signal control and then you'll see the symbol pop up on the instrument cluster and it'll, it'll nudge you to keep you back in your lane it won't it won't ring any alarms or anything but it'll nudge you there does not seem to be adaptive cruise however unfortunately and that, that seems weird um, given even though that this is a base model, um, a lot of base models on normal economy cars are, are giving you radar adaptive cruise and, and lane keep assist and all those features. I don't personally use adaptive cruise that much, but I know a lot of people do. say sound quality is pretty good on the audio um, I, I don't have any music to play right now because I don't want to trigger copyright but uh, audio quality is pretty good I believe this has a base audio system just because uh, I believe this is the base model last I looked up it's a turbo 4 with all-wheel drive quattro as I mentioned previously but it has 184 horsepower 0 to 60 around 7 seconds, which is pretty average um, across all cars nowadays. Rides pretty well too, pretty smooth. is that this car has almost 15,000 miles on it and I have noticed a, a, a creak and a rattle in the door um, in the driver's side door over some harsh bumps sometimes as well as something rattling or something loose in the dash um, it, se it seems to be within this area uh, this is a rental car so I would imagine it has had a, a rougher life than the normal Q3 would have had <laughs> So that might play a role into it. There is a panoramic sunroof, which is nice. Always a fan of that. You can throw the shifter to the right and then you can manually shift.
going to take this right. It'll be local roads. So to set cruise control, you'll you have a stock which I also personally am not a fan of. I, I personally prefer buttons on the steering wheel, but you have a stock. Um, you press the button in to set the cruise control and then it's set. Um, obviously any, anyone that has used a cruise control stock before knows up is to increase the speed, down to decrease the speed. You can push the button again to cancel it or push forward on the stick. So a note on the color, I have gotten a few comments from friends that have seen this as to why the hell someone would buy a bright orange color like this. And I have not been able to give them an answer. It, this does stand out against the, the normal boring white and black cars, you know, and silver cars that you find on parking lots. You'll never lose track of this car is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> you'll, you'll be able to pick it out easily. And I like to call it the pumpkin just because the front of the face is, is kind of angular um, and kind of reminds me of a, of a jack-o'-lantern. So this is a good section coming up after this next light. Um, a block or two after that, it gets really bumpy so you'll be able to see how the car handles rough pavement I don't think I've had a chance to showcase uh, the start-stop technology yet on this car, but it engages pretty quickly after you come to a rest, um, and it also re-engages, it also restarts the engine pretty quickly uh, once you get your foot off the brake or if you turn the steering wheel. I had a uh, Subaru Crosstrek rental recently that also had the auto start stop function. And that one, there was a noticeable delay between the car actually turning off when you came to a rest and when you wanted to get going again. There was, there was like a one or one and a half second delay. Whereas this one is, is very quick. It's like half second, I would say. I definitely prefer the implementation in, in the Audi. Um, compared to the one in the cross trek. Again, I am surprised that there isn't adaptive cruise on um, on this, since this is supposed to be a premium slash luxury um, entry, at least in the, in the United States. but I guess uh, they don't call it the base model for nothing.
nice, there's a palisade behind me. Been seeing a lot of palisades and tether rides recently. Off the line, not particularly quick. This is a great car for commuting in like cities and getting groceries, I would say. I wouldn't I wouldn't expect this to go canyon carving or to anyone to bring bring this canyon carving. <laughs> um, but this is a great vehicle for for normal A to B commuting and running errands and stuff. Just don't expect too much uh, too much fun out of it. It has all-wheel drive, so it'll be good for places of snow as well. One quick note I did want to make about the interior. Um, I personally wasn't overly impressed with, with this interior, and I think part of it plays because of this dashboard material. This is like an injection molded plastic. And it kind of reminds me of like the dashboard material in the old 2010 Altima I used to have back back in high school. Um, like it's soft, but it's like it's still kind of hard at the same time. And I don't know. I just kind of expect leather or fake leather, at least with stitching in this class of vehicle. And maybe maybe the higher trims have that. But this this base trim, it's this is all injection molded, and then this is like a cheap chrome plastic. Um, the the screen material is nice, uh, and the black levels are nice on both the instrument cluster and the infotainment. But it's just this this doesn't scream luxury to me. This screams like like economy car from the 2010s. I'm sorry to say. Okay, so there's no one behind me, so let's um, let's try zero to sixty in this. And again, this is on individual mode with um, sport handling and sport mode, I guess engaged. Um, just going no brake boost, just zero to sixty. I'm gonna floor it. Six to sixty. So, yeah, not, partic not particularly quick, um, but this will be adequate for most people and definitely the people that buy this car. If you want something sportier, you would probably go for something in the S line of Audi. And we are back. So yeah, that was the 2021 Audi Q3 base spec. Um, overall, I like this car. This is a good commuting car. I've driven it to work for the past week and no complaints so far really about it. I just expected a little bit more luxury feeling from an Audi and that might just be from my own misconceptions but it's a good car um comparing this to like a tr like a fully loaded economy car i would probably take the fully loaded economy car that has like the radar cruise 
um, all the safety features. Um, oh, this does have Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, which is pretty standard nowadays. Um, yeah, I don't know. I overall, I really like this car. I'd give it like a like a seven. I think overall, I just I expected some more features from an from an Audi, but this is the base trim. Um, I do want to showcase the Pano sunroof back seat room can fold those down cargo space is pretty pretty average you do have some HVAC console controls back here for the back seat and some plugs outlets and that's about it thanks for coming for the ride and that was the 2021 Audi Q3